Okay, I'd like to call the plan commission to order for Tuesday, October 6th. Roll call, please. Mary Kodowski? Here. Steve Kabaki? Here. Gary Paul? Here. Jim Allen? Present. Allison Williams? Here. Mike Skiffington? Here. Corey Campbell? Here. Please stand for the pledge. Of the United States of America and to the people for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. And please remember all our men and women throughout the world in uniform. Okay, I need a motion on the minutes. I have no changes. Um, move to approve the agenda, the agenda as presented. <laughs> Sorry, thanks. That Gary. Well, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. The agenda. I thought I'd start. <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Action on the minutes from the regular meeting of August 4th, 2020. Move to approve. Second. Second. Motion and a second to approve those minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Yeah, Terry, that's one thing I can't vote on, so right. don't note it. Thank you. Um, comments from the public must be limited to items not on the agenda. We don't have any public here, so we will move on. Number seven, action items. A, action regarding ordinance number 010-1-20, rezoning 724 Parkview Road, parcel VA-198-1, from I-2 Heavy Industry to R-2 Two-Family Residence. Aaron. Okay, uh, I received a uh, phone call uh, from the owner of the property who was going through the process of refinancing uh, their home loan uh, and the uh, title company doing their due diligence uh, found that the property is actually zoned I-2 heavy industry. I'll bring it up on screen here to show you which property it is. Uh, the property as indicated in the packet uh, is right here. Uh, 724 Parkview Road, parcel VA 198-1. Uh, unlike the homes to the east uh, and to the south, uh, this property is zoned I-2 heavy industry, which, within which a home is not a permitted use. Uh, therefore, uh, if the house was to be damaged, uh, whether through uh, weather, fire, et cetera, it could not be rebuilt, uh, which of course causes a red flag for a title company uh, and a bank in terms of refinancing the loan. Uh, why the home uh, is zoned I-2 heavy industry, I guess, uh, is something that happened uh, in the past. I'm not entirely sure why, uh, but the uh, uh, seeing as how the surrounding homes are all zoned R2, uh, two family residents, um, I didn't see a uh, pressing reason to keep it zoned I2 heavy industry. Uh, so my recommendation is to recommend the village board to uh, recommend the rezoning to R2 uh, heavy industry for parcel VA 198-1. Uh, would the approval of this action uh, inhibit any future possibility for that area to be utilized for an industrial application? Uh, it would only impact the house itself. Uh, so it would not impact- Well, you're, 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 you're cutting off quite a bit of the property in this drawing. Uh, no, the entire parcel uh, as you see right up here on the screen, this entire parcel is zoned I-2 heavy industry. The proposal is to rezone that whole property to R-2, two family residents. Okay. Okay. I'll move to approve the rezoning parcel VA-198-1 um, from I-2 heavy industry to R-2, two family residents. I second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second to recommend rezoning parcel VA-198-1 from I-2 heavy industry to R-2 two-family residence. Any discussion? 
question, Aaron, I'm sure it was an oversight on past, uh, for, uh, just in the past year people overlooked it. I guess the question, which I don't guess there's written, not a decent answer for it, but how come that wasn't caught prior to this re, when he bought the house? Or is it just something that they must have overlooked themselves? Right, I guess the home was actually recently purchased as well, so went through a whole purchase process uh, without catching that. It's something that just fell through the cracks. Okay, I, I, I don't have a problem with this. Okay. First, okay. Any more discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 7B, action regarding ordinance number 010-2-20, repealing and replacing certain sections of Ashwaubenon Municipal Code, Chapter 17, Article 5, density, intensity, and dimensional standards. Cleanup item. This is a cleanup item. Um, what prompted this was uh, our, our building inspectors uh, have received a lot of questions uh, regarding people improving their homes uh, recently as a result of uh, COVID. Quite honestly, people are, instead of traveling, they are investing their homes, whether it's for patios, uh, in-ground pools, accessory structures, uh, home additions, porches, uh, you name it. Uh, they're seeing a, a, we're seeing a big push in uh, home reinvestment, which all in all is a good thing for the village. Uh, what we were running into uh, is in the code, there was a table that limited the amount of uh, impervious surface uh, per lot based upon the uh, lot size. Uh, what those impervious surface numbers were based upon, I guess is, uh, is unknown. I did talk with Steve Burr, our village engineer who handles our stormwater utility, uh, and uh, he didn't really know what those were based on either. So. I took a look at it and uh, based upon uh, some research, based upon talking with Steve about different alternatives, uh, it, it came to my attention that it seems like a better approach rather than determining how much impervious surface someone has, which can involve quite a bit of detailed uh, site plan and actually possibly hiring a surveyor to figure out those numbers, is to go with the straight 25% green space requirement. Uh, that's much easier to define, uh, much easier to calculate, and most people will easily fall within that. Uh, so in reviewing this section of the chapter and making that recommended change, there were a number of other items that really popped up as far as cleanup items, either through uh, interpretations we've had to make over the years that we'd rather just write into the code uh, so it's more black and white, uh, or whether it's just some uh, omissions uh, in the code as far as some uh, blank cells in the table of dimensional standards or otherwise. Uh, one item I guess I would like to bring your attention to uh, in the table uh, is the uh, recommendation to uh, reduce the minimum lot, minimum lot size uh, and frontage for the R1 uh, residential zoning district. Within the village, or currently, uh, the requirement is 100 feet of frontage and 12,000 square feet uh, for an R1 uh, residential lot. The vast majority of the village uh, currently would not meet that requirement, our R1 districts. Uh, they vary generally between you know, 75 to 85 uh, feet. Uh, talking about you know, Comanche, View Lane, Bruce Lane, LaCroix, Kasner, kind of our our established neighborhoods. So all of those lots currently are technically legally non-conforming. Uh, this is intended to bring them closer to conformance uh, as well as uh, just provide some additional flexibility uh, for any redevelopment that may occur uh, for our residential areas. Uh, other communities, I took a look at uh, Village of Howard, for instance, uh, their minimum lot area is 10,800 square feet, but 80 feet of frontage. So again, we're well within uh, norms as far as what the recommendation is. I believe as it currently stands uh, is quite a bit higher than what uh, is necessary for a good single family home. 
other than that, um, it really was a matter of cleaning up, making things consistent, uh, either within uh, the code uh, or the ordinance, uh, and cleaning up uh, some just mislabels, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so we'd be happy to answer any questions you have uh, regarding the proposed revisions. Uh, Can you, okay, we're lumping this all into COVID-19. I've got to believe that uh, some of the R1s are not, you're not changing the square footage on those because of COVID. No, that's absolutely correct. Okay. Correct. It's, I figured if we're going to make amendments to this table, it makes sense to look at it holistically rather than piecemeal. Try and put, pull it all together at one time. Correct. Okay. It appears, Aaron, you tried to standardize some things here and make it easier for all parties, including plan commission. Takes a little bit more of the arbitrary and capricious away from the plan commission as it relates to harmony mm -hmm. and that type of thing. But uh, the one thing I noticed is that your new development, your green space requirement, consistently drops from 35 to 25. Do you feel comfortable with that? I do. And uh, one of the reasons I, I felt comfortable with that was because in the, as it currently stands, our minimum green space requirement uh, that we have here uh, is generally 25%. Um, uh, I've had developers ask me about this uh, this table seventeen five two hundred. Say what you have a minimum green space requirement for new development of thirty five to twenty five, and they said so. Which one is it? <laughs> and you know, I, I think it's a matter of cleaning it up and saying, all right, twenty five percent seems to be a good sound number. Everyone can relate to and understand. So that was my rationale for that. Um, I'm also hoping that this cuts down on a few of the calls that we get uh, either to me or to our building inspectors uh, just with questions uh, on interpretation of the code. So I'm hoping to clean that up and create some efficiencies uh, for folks who can read this uh, on their own and uh, come to a pretty common sense uh, decision on it. Thank you. Can, can you go, I know we're going backwards here for this picture here. Okay, this is the one where it has the lots that just got approved. For the, for the rezoning? Yeah, for the rezoning. So okay. if you go across the street, the 88-foot lot is a non-conforming lot even at the 90 feet. That's correct, and most still will. Um, but they are legal non-conforming, so they can continue to operate as is. Um, what they couldn't do is make them more non-conforming. So if someone has a, let's say, an 88-foot lot, they would not be able to split off you know, 10 feet or so and sell it to their neighbor because they'd be creating additional non-conformity. Uh, Aaron, does I don't know, maybe it doesn't apply. Does this have anything to do with the of the property value at all? No, no. Uh, it's okay. it's hard to make a correlation between lot size and property value. Um, I've seen some very large lots with very low property values, very small lots with very high property values. So, for instance, Woods Edge, uh, probably some of the smallest lots in the community, um, but the homes there. Or the properties there on average are anywhere from you know two ninety to three hundred sixty thousand dollars. So there's no correlation at all between lot size uh, and valuation. Okay. All right. Uh, if there's no other questions. I got to back up. I'll move to approve the. Uh, I move to uh, uh, approval of the uh, to the board uh, re uh, repelling and replacing Chapter 17, Article 5, uh, dash density, dash intensity, dash dimensional standards. I can approve that. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve Ordinance Number 010-2-20. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Number eight, items for next agenda. Do we have, oh, we have to talk about. November 3rd. November 3rd, mm -hmm. yes. But any items for next agenda? Um, yes, there will. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so November, we discussed this the other day. November 3rd is the election. So the election is in this room and Patrick's gonna be moving the central count into the conference room A also. Mm -hmm. So we won't have a room. Can we move it to the following Tuesday? Um, Mary, is there any, <clears throat> Mary, is there any way that we could uh, use uh, conference C with the open area out there? Conference, well, B is used for also for central count. Yeah, but C. C is in the engineering department. That'd be really small right. in terms of distancing. Yeah. But I'm concerned. saying I'll use the other space around around there. Is that too small yet? Before you go much further, we're working the election, so we right. ain't gonna be here. We're we're opening right. up right. Right. ballots. And that's gonna take all right. day into the night, I'm sure. Right. Is it something where we could? It's going to be busy that night here. Right. Yeah. Is it something where we could internally try to identify a couple dates? Uh, send and them out. Yeah. Send out to the uh, committee yeah. members to see what would work. Yeah, because okay, I think when we talked about the tenth, the problem with the tenth is that ballots that judge ruled that the ballots can continue to be come in oh, yeah. until the ninth, and then on the tenth they're going to be. They're going to be running ballots again. So let us figure it out and we will shoot everybody an email. Mm -hmm. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Okay. There's nothing else. I entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. We have a motion and a, a, motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. We're done.